this is the Nexus Special, Episode 41, Nexus Event 2015, on Wednesday, September 30th, 2015. And now, did anything world-changing happen? Mm-hmm. This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian Buck and Ryan Rampersett. This episode also has show notes at thenexus.tv slash ns41. So I love it when uh, we have Nexus Specials about Nexus Events. Hmm, it's pretty uh, pretty clever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think actually this is the first time that they've like really just called it. This is the Nexus event. Wait, are you telling me that the Nexus Six didn't get an event? Are you telling me that? No, it did, but it wasn't. What else did they announce at last year's September event or October event, whenever it was? Are you the sure they event? had an event? Did they? Or was it a blog post? Ninety percent sure it was a blog right, post. They only they do just blog posts for some things, which is strange. And what about the Nexus 5? Do you know if that got an event? You know, now that now that you say so, I think it was just a blog post. And, and what about the Nexus 4? Did that get an event? Oh, I don't remember back that far. No, because there was a hurricane, which is oh, fair. Oh, yeah. But none of the devices until this week have had an event. Okay. But it, it totally made sense to have an event because they had a lot of stuff to talk about, not just one phone. Yes. And not just two phones. By the way, there's two phones. What if there were four phones? Four phones. There's not. That would be... Oh, man, that would... I don't, well, that would cover the whole range. I have trouble enough, like thinking about two Nexus phones and mm. like two Motorola phones. Well, we'll we'll talk about yeah. how that is really confusing in a little bit. Yeah. But so uh, this was the Nexus event. So guess what happened? Mm. They announced some Nexuses. That's right. Nexi. Nexuses. Ne- Nexu. Yes, Nexu. <laughs> For a total uh, of two. Nexu, Nexu. <laughs> So, what do you want to tell me about them? All right, so they've got two cam or mm, two cameras. Yeah. They've got two phones. Uh, they one of them is a successor to last year's Nexus Six. Mm-hmm. Uh, they call it the Six P. One of them is a successor to two years ago's Nexus Five. Now it's the Five X. That's right. Uh, so the as as is tradition, they you know go through and and uh, pick different Android manufacturers to kind of partner with for these projects. This year, Six P. Uh, is for the first time being made by a Chinese manufacturer, Huawei. So that, I mean, that's a kind of a bold statement by Google, don't you think? I think that's extremely interesting. Uh, If you recall, uh, the U.S. government sort of maybe kind of said that Huawei was doing some shady things. Oh, yeah? uh, Potentially with, you know, the Chinese government and installing malicious software Mm -hmm. on devices. So there was some kind of... uh, you know, suspicion going around, but maybe that's been resolved since then. Well, it's also the kind of thing where you we're not going to have to worry about that with this particular device because we know that all of the software comes from Google, unless Huawei somehow finds a hardware <laughs> solution to uh, tracking us and, and sending data back mm. without Google knowing well, about it. Well, you just broke through the secret plan, didn't mm, you? Whoa. Oh. It wasn't very hard. No, of I course I just used not. my imagination. Okay, so I guess we have to ask the obvious question. What does the P mean? It can't be Pixel, can it? I, I don't know why. There's nothing special about the Pixels involved. I, I mean, I get I get what the X is. It's what everybody puts after a number. Sure. Yeah. Like, for me, it's the NX logo. I mean, it's the, the letter after the first thing. I mean, what is the P? It's, um... Mm. You have no idea. I, 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 they just made it up. I mean, it's it's well, very strange. I don't well, get it. Where did uh, where did Apple come up with the S? No. They they said the three GS was for speed. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's oh, and so then after that, just every other year became an S year. Yeah, it became the speed year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose they are. They do actually have new processors in them, so that's fair. Right. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that made sense. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand the weird convention with the P. So next no. year, are we going to get the 6SP? <laughs> PS? Well, I think it's the only... I mean, putting a letter after it is really the only way that they can get away with their numbering yes, system right. as it is. Because otherwise it would be the Nexus 62. Yeah. <laughs> 6.2? I don't know. 62. That'd be weird. Um, but yeah, so so as I was saying, though, so Huawei made the 6P, uh, and they partnered again with LG for the 5X. Um, so most, most years... Uh, people make kind of a big deal of so this is the Nexus Five. It's kind of based on LG's mm-hmm. a phone G- that exists G two or whatever it right. was at the time. Yep. G two. Um, the you know the Nexus Six is based off of Motorola's new Moto X. X. Yeah. Um, actually, not really, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Later, maybe. So so what what is the non Nexus equivalence of the Six P and the Five X? So 
I don't know what the equivalent for the 6P is precisely. It's probably one of the idle lines. Huawei idle okay. phones exist. Uh, they they have been making quite a big, uh, quite a few big tablet phablety phones. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's probably one of those. I okay. don't know which one. Uh, I also don't know for sure because those phones never really make it here. Right. You know, they're kind of restricted to the you know uh, Asian areas. It's hard to talk about things that we can't have. Yeah, and since I can't have them, I don't know about them. Right. So the Nexus 5X is allegedly kind of the this year's clone or subish clone of the uh, LG G4. Okay. Um, just because that's what we hear doesn't mean it's true, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look at the two, they're quite different. Right, especially, like, whenever I think of a clone, I, I think of the physical form factor more than anything else. And it didn't really happen with the Nexus 5 either. That wasn't right. even a, a physical clone. It was quite different. Yeah. And and uh, let's see, the Nexus 5 was the first one that had kind of their... the 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 standard nexus feel that they yes. kind of stuck with for a couple super of years plain of, not yeah. ornamental not like the nexus 4 the matte plastic back which the i ne- love nexus so much 4. um yeah yeah the nexus 4 didn't fit into that at all no um but that's co- that's okay because it was before that right it was before but before the before four uh, <laughs> good that's bad <laughs> uh, but, but yeah so like e- even you know on up to the nexus 9 which is you know this um lunar white whatever you know with with a matte right exactly plastic back and mm-hmm. yeah maybe some highlights of that color on the front but mostly a black front and, i mean even you know. lo- even look at the nexus 7s they mm-hmm. were extremely mm-hmm. plain the only real like uh ornamental decoration on it was i don't know which one but it was the little dimples on the back of one of them right yeah Wait, dimples on the back of the uh, Nexus Seven? Yeah, like not like not like deep dimples, like uh, like the this, Motorola this thing, ones. but like little pinholes, sort of. Okay, there was a texture on it. Okay, um, but that's it. You know, mm-hmm. otherwise it's really plain. It's just a slab of glass that that is usually black. Now these two new ones, the Six P and the Five X, they kind of are going away from that a little bit, mm-hmm. especially the Six P, because the Six P is made of uh, what did they say it was uh, some kind uh, of like, so- some kind of super premium polycarbonate. Yeah, so. I think they they were using like space exploration words and then said aluminium, <laughs> yeah, which is like British for al- aluminum. One of them is made out of some kind of polycarbonate, and the other one's made out of some kind of space grade al- aluminium. Yeah, alu. And I remember specifically the six, the six P is the aluminum one, but yeah. I don't um I don't know what that means mm-hmm. because I don't think it means anything. Now the other way that these two are physically different from any other phone that we've really seen not just from from the ones that they're clones of quote mm-hmm. unquote yeah uh, is the fact that they both have that uh that dimple on the back that serves as a, a fingerprint scanner not like that dimple no it's it's it seems to be like a flat kind of impression on mm-hmm. the back um yeah, it's sort of but it's probably some kind of glassy surface or something something mm-hmm. that your fingerprint can read through i mean it looks for all the world like the home button on mm. the iphone 6 and 6s yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it's almost the same sensor yeah 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 mm-hmm. well the story goes the nexus 6 has the dimple and they were going to get the sensor but then apple came in and bought the company from under motorola oh just straight up bought the company not just uh hogged not, all of the no just bought the company the, like you might yeah okay allegedly that's what the story is mm-hmm. so let's talk about some major features of these phones Right. Um, so let's yeah, let's start with that new fingerprint sensor. Um, it can scan your finger. Yeah, and they're including that, of course, because uh, Apple did it first. Apple did it first, but also because Android is now uh, Android six point oh Marshmallow is the first version that has just out of the box um, fingerprint APIs mm-hmm. supported in it. Um, and they were talking about in the in the presentation, they were talking about how the fingerprint sensor gets better every time that you use it. So the more times that you touch it, it'll it'll kind of store a little bit more data about your fingerprint. So I wonder how that works. So like, let's say you miss one time, you know, you, you don't use the center of your finger, mm. you kind of use it a little bit more off to the side, but then you do it again the right way. So maybe it will figure out like, oh, well, he did it wrong the first time, but that's still him because he got it right the second time. Yeah. So it'll and then be... it'll add the first part that it missed into the database. So then it'll be better at recognizing half of your finger next time. Exactly. Right. So that's pretty cool. That would be nice. And mm-hmm. and obviously, like all of the things that we're talking about are just the words that Google used. We have no idea if any of these are actually going to work in real life. Yeah. Well, you know? lies. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, every single year, every phone manufacturer talks a big game about their camera. Yeah. Now. And every mm-hmm. single time, you know the reviewers get it in their hands and there's no low light support yeah exactly um so cameras uh they were talking a big game about cameras 
And so it's so big, it's 1.55 microns big. Yeah. Huge. Right. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what um, units I, those are. So for, for comparison, the iPhone 6S, no, the iPhone 6, rather, it has um, an 8 megapixel sensor. Okay. And the microns are 1.22 okay. microns. And the 6P has 1.55 microns and a 12.3 megapixel sensor. Are more mi- bigger microns better? Bigger or better. Okay, cool. Let's more light in, I guess. Cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I wonder how, what size microns my DSLR has. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know if they even care about that on DSLRs. They're huge anyway. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. More uh, space. For storage or for well, just more, more uh, space for the sensor? In, in the sensor. Right. I mean, it's, yep. it's huge. I, I was at the AT&T store today actually doing something. And... Um, I was looking at the very small lenses the iPhone has. Like, it's mm-hmm. really tiny compared to the huge thing here on the Nexus yeah. 6. And it's amazing that those phones can take such great pictures. Those I don't, microns. I don't think that the lens size actually really matters. Because, like, if you, look at a, if you look at the Nexus 5 camera aperture, like, all of that space that's well, taken right. up by, taken up by glass. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a bunch. Like, if you look under the glass, it's just a bunch of black. Rings. And then... And then in the middle is the tiny little actual uh, lens. Okay, well, in fairness then, compared to that, the iPhone sensor is gigantic. Yeah, Yeah. probably. Mm-hmm. I haven't opened it up to find out. I will. Maybe we should do mine, because mine has dust under the under the, under the the lens. Eh, yeah, mm. I yeah. I thought you were supposed to send that back. I was, but I've never called them. Mm. It, yeah, it's a problem. Is it over now? I have no idea. I haven't mm. called. Okay. <laughs> I should call and find yeah, out soon should, before the next ones co- go on sale because that's probably a pretty hard cutoff. It's almost probably over. Yeah. Yeah. Less bloatware. Less bloatware. How do you feel about that? I feel... So, I mean, as a Google fanboy, uh, I've never really felt the... Like, it's never seemed bad to me that the most Google apps come pre-installed on the phones. Um, you know, it makes perfect sense to me that, like, of course I want YouTube on my phone. Of course you want Gmail. You yeah, of course yeah. I want Gmail. And, and, uh, but, like, you know, then there's a few, like, news, pay, newsstand. Yeah, newsstand, yeah. which was formerly Currents. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that when it was Currents, it, it was never a pre-installed app as Currents. Really? Yeah. Oh, it was. If you remember the Nexus 7 2013 launch, everybody said Currents had a bug on launch day that it was just draining battery life because it was constantly updating and it oh. just didn't have anything to update for. And the, let's see, 2013, was that the first Nexus 7 or second. was that the second one? Yep, okay, second. right. Did I have the second one? No, I had the first one. <laughs> two two first ones. Yes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Broke both of them. <laughs> well, that's what they're for. So in comparison, Cyanogen Mod that I put on this phone, right. this is the first, gener- first generation Moto G, it doesn't come with any Google apps except the Play Store. Right. Which is okay. really cool. You can pick exactly what you want. And I think that's really great. Now, for a normal person, though, that must really suck because... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, imagine you don't have Gmail on your phone and you're looking for it. Well, then what do you do? Why would you assume you can g- just go and download that? I guess somebody might think that, but it's not something I think most people would yeah. ever do. Yeah. And yeah, what's what's that statistic about how like whatever percent of people, is, it's a majority, mm-hmm. don't install any apps yep. in a given month? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, yeah. Well, when I was at the at t store, again, I, I, I was listening in on the conversations of all the employees and, 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 you know, consumers, and a bunch of people were setting up their Android phones for the first time, and it's like, hmm, that's very strange that you need help doing that. During the iPad setup uh, this week, you know, oh, yeah. I've, I've been helping a lot of students oh, with, yeah. you know, troubleshoot issues, and, and a lot of those issues, I mean, come from the fact that we have Apple's ID service mm. topped with SPPSs. LDAP, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and... And so, yeah, that, that creates a lot of friction. And one of the students mm-hmm. was like, D- is this how hard it is for people who just go out and buy an iPad? And I'm like, well, no, not quite. But I mean, like, you do have to make an Apple ID and log into that and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like, even, and and it took, you know, for, for they give us uh, an hour and a half to complete this with like a class of 30 students, right? Okay. And it's, and it's like, you know, we easily get done in that time. Right. At least when i'm there helping because yeah. you know, i know what i'm doing exactly and uh and so it's yeah yeah it's like it it kind of blows my mind that people like would complain so much about the initial setup process for a phone you know um so one of the things they said about this is that the apps that are there are apparently post setup i don't know what that means right yes and that that actually seems like it's going to be more of a hassle for and people that's what i thought yeah 
So I'm kind of curious to know, was this less bloatware push, was that because they're currently uh, potentially going up? under like an investigation for antitrust issues within android and i know that's happening in the eu and it could happen here in the u.s mm -hmm. it, it the the rumors are rumbling here and i don't think so i think it's too early for them to even react to that honestly I don't, right that's true i don't think they care for that i think they're probably just doing it because they realize that a lot of they, they must surely know that people do not click google books in the little folder when a phone is installed for the first time oh sure like they must know that and so they this, probably have data on it, like actual data. Yeah, I'm sure that people click on the Nexus Experience program or something, or even just like on their Samsung phone. Maybe that maybe they'll change the Mada or whatever they call it that that forces the OEMs to put in, you know, all oh, the little sure. folders on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're finally reacting to that data now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, for the most part, if if somebody's coming, okay, if, if somebody is getting a smartphone for the first time. They might, yeah, they might go around and try and figure out what things are, unless they're not the kind of person that does that, in which case they're just going to use the phone app, and that's about it. And maybe the message maybe, app. Maybe, yeah, mm -hmm. um, potentially Chrome, because they'll recognize that uh, icon. But, like, yeah, for the rest of them, they won't know what the heck they are. No. Um, and, and you yeah. know, I wouldn't be surprised if people didn't even know what folders were. Oh, goodness. No, they have to. Oh, please don't say that. You're ruining my life. <laughs> the reality we live in. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please, everybody, come and take my computer tech one class at, at Harding High School. Please, um, do it. Enroll in, in high school again so that you can come and learn from me. <laughs> I, you know, I used to teach um, computer basics 101 mm -hmm. at, for community education. Awful. Because, mm. you know, people don't know how to use a mouse. Sounds soul crushing. Mm, you know, it is. Um, so yeah, less blower. That's I mean, it's good and it's bad, as long as they take away the things that suck and don't take away the things that are essential. Well, you know, if it's restricted to nexuses, that probably doesn't matter because all those people are probably enthusiasts. That's true, or at least the majority. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody's ever heard of the nexus line. Why are we talking about this again? Is this important? Well, I think my network is named after it, sort <laughs> of. Um, you know why this is important, actually? They're bringing the future to us <gasps> in the form of USB Type C. Oh. Now, of course, they're not the first phone to do this. Uh, Who's the first? Uh, well, the OnePlus 2 came out right. with USB Type-C. I don't know if there were any others, but that's the only... That's, yeah, it's the only one I know. That's, yeah. that's the big name one. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so, I mean, the, the Nexus line has traditionally been Google making a thing to show the rest of the Android manufacturers this is where we want to go with Android. Mm -hmm, um, definitely. And so adopting a new standard for, you know, for the port is a is a pretty big important part of that. Um so currently, how many how many devices do you have Ryan that uh, have USB-C ports? 1 2 3 No, no, type C. Oh, type C? Yeah, how how many how many devices yeah, do you have? How do I write zero big enough to describe <laughs> how many I don't have? And how many how many USB Type C cords do you have laying around? How do I describe not to you? Uh, I think you just did. Hmm. So that's that's going to be a problem. Um, as with all the transitions from different port types to new ones, is uh, you're going to end up with a mix of devices that are use old versions and new versions of 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 a port. Um, and so basically, it's just kind of like, how soon do you want to jump into that and mm -hmm. start that process? Because um, eventually, you know, all phones, except for p potentially iPhones, yep. will be using USB-C to, uh, to charge. Right. Um, and probably most laptops will as Hopefully. well. We've, we've started to see that with, uh, I mean... You know, even, even the MacBook One yeah. charges with type c is that what they call that no the but that's MacBook what all one? the apple people call it. okay um i think it's just called the macbook otherwise that's the i mean that's this has the same naming problems as the xbox one yes uh, but there's only one macbook so it's okay okay because the rest are airs or pros oh sure sure okay yeah mm -hmm. um but i mean w w don't we get that con what was the original macbook irrelevant it's ancient Right, but so is the original Xbox. Yeah, but, but, but nobody cares. But there's still the problem of like when I say Xbox One, what am I talking about? Am no, I talking about the first Nobody has Xbox? the problem okay. with Mac. Yeah, Book right. One. Okay. I don't know why. You're right. What were we talking about? USB C. Yes, right. That. So, so yeah. So the the two. I mean, it, it was hilarious that these two laptops came out at like exactly the same mm -hmm. time, both supporting USB Type C. The the MacBook One and the Pixel, two. the Chromebook Pixel yeah. second generation. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so it kind of got me thinking, like, eventually, obviously, we'll have tons and tons of USB Type-C cables laying around. We'll have tons and tons of uh, um, devices that that go off of uh, USB Type-C. And what happens, for example, like, I can currently plug my phone into my laptop and charge it off of my laptop. Mm-hmm. No problem. Right. It's very, very obvious which direction the energy is going to flow because energy <laughs> tends to flow from the big end of the USB cord to the little end of the USB cord. Usually. Usually. I mean, that's that's kind of how, they, how they're set up to assume. You know, the, mm-hmm. the phone is never going to charge something from USB. No. Um, but, the, but the laptop is used to doing that because it has a lot of peripherals that are going to draw power from it. If I plug in two devices that both charge with and can potentially charge other things from mm. USB Type-C, what happens? How do they decide which one is going to charge the other one? So let's say you plugged in like a, a 5X to a 5X. Right. And one's fully charged, one's at 50%. Do they just both go to 75? I don't know. Well, no, the answer it's, would be no. No. They go to 65 Right, because it's not a one to one. Yeah, we've got some inefficiencies. Um, but still, I don't. Th- I think the phones would just recognize that. No, you don't have enough power mm-hmm. to charge me. Go away. Yeah, but like, okay, so yeah, yeah. What happens if I plug two pixels into each other? I think it's going to say the same thing. You don't have enough power to charge me. Go away. Oh, you mean like not enough uh, wattage to yeah, charge that, me? Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. Um, yeah, see, I was assuming that we were talking in milliamp hours. Yeah, no, different. <laughs> in capacity you know i I think it's interesting um you know with the whole cable thing here uh i don't have any type c cables yep but on the other hand i also don't have any lightning cables Mm -hmm. is that is that what it's called i think so yeah i did have a i did have a student come up to me today and was like do you have an iphone charger and i was like no i have android phones yeah and and so the reason i don't have any lightning cables even though brandon or brian could come here and do the show here i can't charge for them you know Mm -hmm. i can't i can't charge their phones and the reason is to get those if you get a knockoff one, your phone will catch on fire and you'll be out on iPhone. Sure. But if you don't get one, you'll be out $50. So then you have to pick one, uh, fire or 50. Mm-hmm. And I pick neither. Right. Because mm-hmm. it's a, it's not going to help your life very much. And, and so like, if that's the same decision making with type C, do I have to buy a $25 cable to charge my phone? I'm not going to do it. Well, I mean, since it's a standard... Um, so is the micro USB, like, but yeah. to get the good chargers, you know, with the good 2.1 milliamp mm-hmm. power, whatever, sure. you know what I mean? Um, you know, that's expensive. Yeah, but how are you supposed to know when you're buying a USB type, uh, sorry, micro USB cable, whether it's going to have that? Well, usually w- w- with the cable, it doesn't matter. It's right. the brick at the other end. Ah, sure. But um, it, if it's integrated in, so if the brick and the cable is all one piece, then it then it matters, but otherwise mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I have I have noticed uh, with like different cables that uh, some of mine have kind of seemingly worn out a bit. And yeah, you know, when happens. I plug two two different ones into one charging brick, mm-hmm. one of them charges faster than the other. One could be a data cable. One could be power only. No. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Haunted. Um. So yeah. So that's that's the future. It's coming slowly. Um, I don't know do, if I'm ready for it. Do you think that next year, like the flagship phones, will all have USB C? Or yes, yes, okay. Uh, I think Snapdragon A20 um, will almost certainly imply that. Like it, it won't support micro USB anymore, kind of thing. Probably. Okay. I'm. Mm. I would. Uh, probably. I would go. I would put a dollar on that. The future is coming, and it will be shoved down your throat, whether you like it or not. And it'll be reversible. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Your, because your throat is a circle. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's reversible. Um, okay, so doze mode. Um, doze mode. That, so that one they've been talking up since Google I.O. for, for sure. Um, and it's, it is actually a feature, right, that's available in the preview image. It, it is in the preview. Um, I don't have cool graphs like the Google team does to prove that it works. Mm-hmm. You know, with spikes and not spikes. Yeah. Um, but if we think it works... I guess that's cool, but how often do I leave my phone on the table? Right, and is it um, is it the kind of thing where you're right? Because at Google I/O they were talking mostly about, well, what happens if you have this tablet that you leave on your nightstand for the most of the day, and then you come back and you want to use it again? It shouldn't be drawing a whole lot of power during that time and doing stuff. Um, right, that was how they kind of showed off right. those mode. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it looked in the graphs. It looks like some kind of exponential time increase you know it'll check an update if you haven't touched it since then 
it'll go longer. And then mm-hmm. if you haven't, if it'll update again. And if you haven't touched it for longer. Right. But how does that work for a phone? Yeah. Cause, um, for a phone, at least, you know, if I'm, if I have a phone with me during the day, it's not going to be standing still. It's going to be in my pocket moving Usually, around. Usually. Yeah. Um, and and you had a special requirement right because my so ever since uh lollipop came out and they brought google fit with it mm-hmm. to, to go along with the new launch of the uh, android wear devices yep um my phone has become my pedometer and not only that but like you know it's it's kind of important to me that location history is mm-hmm. accurate i think that's very important and uh you know stuff like that so so I don't want it if if it is throttling while it's in my pocket. I don't want it to throttle those things. Right. And I don't. And I. I mean, I think that Google wants me to have location history to you know to be accurate and everything. Because, yeah. So they can serve you survey you better. Uh, well, not only that, but they. I mean, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, they do want that. But also, like for the consumer facing features, they want to be able to kind of tell me, uh, you know, in Google now, mm-hmm. yep. like based on your current location you've been here three days what? in a row would you like to do something here mm-hmm. yeah um the 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 parking uh the parking location mm-hmm. um that's very important yes like, exactly that, that needs to whether i'm using the phone i'm not going to be using a phone in the car right unless i'm playing music off of it mm-hmm. right so like it could potentially just be sitting in my pocket for a while yeah that's another good then, one what if know? it's in the car it is doing something but it is sitting still mm-hmm. yeah you know there's a lot of edge cases and hopefully they you know we're able to rein some of those edge cases in. Right. But the biggest edge case is what you say, you know, it's it you know, you're you're sort of teaching and so you're standing around sort of it's your phone's in your pocket. You're not going to leave mm-hmm. your phone out on your desk. No. Cuz you don't want some, you know, grubby hands to be touching that. Right. Well, you know, if you work in an office, maybe it's okay. Maybe you're less afraid. I still wouldn't do it in an office though. I want my phone with me. Um, you know, you walk away, you 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 go to a meeting, you're not going to leave your phone. You're going to take that with you, of course. Mhm. So how often is your phone ever going to be just sitting idle, not charging? Right. Much less often than another device. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe the maybe the Chromebooks need this, or maybe the uh, tablets will get more use out of it. Yeah, I've never really had a problem with a Chromebook. It's because you shut it when it's lot. done. Well, yeah. What yeah. A, well, no, because even um, so, even if you just leave a Chromebook sitting for a while, yeah, it goes to sleep. Um, it goes to sleep, which mm-hmm. I think is the exact same sleep mode that it yeah. has when it's shut. Mm-hmm. Um, and and given the i mean at least for the for the samsung chromebook that i have um that thing can go for like a whole weekend on standby mode and and i'll open it up again and be like oh yeah i, I have like 25 percent battery left cool that's you know a few hours so maybe i just don't get it yeah so i was reading on reddit people have actually somehow tested it on the nexus 5 and the nexus 6 mm-hmm. and they were saying on their nexus 6 they could get 0.2 per hour loss on snooze or on doze i mean okay 0.2 um percentage that's wow per hour that's very small Mm -hmm. uh, on those but that also means they weren't using their phone at all right yeah so is that even useful well what do we mean what are we saying by not use do we mean not moving or do we on a table alone well lonely cold (laughs) i would never treat my my uh phones that way i know i wouldn't either you heard nothing exactly dog what dog what dog Hi, Doug. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, so. it's kind of a it's a double it's a double sided problem, right? Because the phone double sided. Well, yeah, because from one end, uh, the batteries in a phone have to be smaller than the batteries in a tablet. Yes. Yes, because the phone needs to fit in your pocket. Right. At the same time, the phone is like your personal assistant. Mm-hmm. It does everything and for it's you. It's always on you. So it needs to be able to do certain things without those things being throttled. Mm-hmm. So it's it's coming from both ends and it's creating the same problem. And you know, there there are some technical solutions too. So uh, in in this event, they mentioned um, a new Android sensor chip thing, mm-hmm. and presumably that can draw power but not using the main CPUs to right. do it. This sounds like a very, um, you know, original Moto X kind of approach. Exactly. So that makes a lot of sense. And so if that's the case, then hopefully, uh, I keep calling it snooze, but Doze won't mess with it. That's mm-hmm. great. On the other hand, Big Little, which is a CPU architecture, the four big cores, four small cores, right. presumably one small core could be active in Doze mode or, you know, periodically active. And mm-hmm. it could just go and do stuff that it needs to do, track your steps, not track your steps. Yep. You but know? the main cores aren't doing much. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that's good. Uh, last year at I.O., they talked a lot about 
Android 5's new scheduler system so it could coalesce updates and oh, sure, sure. you know network queries and CPU time but it all depended on apps to implement it and guess what apps didn't right. implement them any Google app so right. it doesn't matter oh really well of course not Google doesn't update their apps have you seen Hangouts last year or this year or any year it finally got the material update <laughs> oh yeah and it still looks <laughs> awful um what was I going to say? Oh, I was listening to the Material podcast, mm-hmm. and during the last episode, they I think they were talking about um, how Google is potentially taking the approach of like just straight up denying apps being able to refresh things. I don't know if he was talking about while it's in doze mode not moving, or or if that was based on activity. Um, huh. It really depends on how doze mode works. Yeah. Because if doze mode literally just turns off... I assumed it just turned off all of the non-system apps. Okay. Like so, like Gmail is not a system app. It's it's a Google app, but it's mm-hmm. not part of the system. Sure. That's what I assumed it would do. Mm-hmm. But if it's turning off each app individually, then who knows what's going on? I yeah yeah I don't know. We'll uh, not look into it. I remember back in the day, I used to kind of attribute the Nexus 5's a terrible battery life to the fact that it was, uh, you know, like querying my location every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um. And I don't know how accurate that sentiment was. Is somewhat accurate, but I think the Nexus 5 also just had Google issues. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So let's talk about prices for those two phones. Okay. I uh, like this. This uh, is good. So what were the prices? Crap. Did I write them down? No, you didn't. Oh, my God. I didn't write them down. Um, so just click on the links. They were there for a reason. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's start with the cheaper one. Um, the one that I'm more likely to buy. <laughs> Aww. So, well, I mean, okay. So... There we'll are, get there. There are a couple of reasons why I'm more likely to buy that one. And the size is one of them, um, and the price is the other. So the Nexus 5X... It just X, means I have to buy the other one to get the box. Perfect. Okay. Um, so the Nexus 5X starts at 379 but uh, that's the 16 gig version, so you don't want that one. Um, what is it? 450? 429 Four, for the other. 429 for for the uh, 32 gig version. So what is that jump in? $50? Is that, is that how numbers work? Um, let's see. For, uh, 80 to... 30 yes yes, <laughs> yes that, wow so that's a 50 dollar jump um which is pretty standard yeah for, that that's normal mm-hmm. i think then that's okay so the the nexus 5x um you know it's 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 the lesser phone uh you know it has an 808 processor it only has yep it has two gigs of memory right i think so yeah uh let's pretend that it does and if i'm wrong nobody will correct me um you know I think that's an okay price, but at that point, why not just get one of those second gen or third gen Moto Gs? You know, you're getting a camera that's the same as the Nexus 6. You're getting Moto battery life promises. You might get updates someday, maybe, if you're lucky. For the <laughs> what, 5X or the Moto G? The Moto G. Ah, yeah. Um, and you can customize it with Moto Maker. Right. You don't get the fingerprint stuff, mm-hmm. but if you're looking for a cheap phone, that's not what you're looking for anyway. That's true. Yeah. Wait. Which which processor does the Moto G have? It still has a four hundred. Okay. Snapdragon four hundred, which isn't great, but if you're looking for a cheap phone, you don't care. Well, I don't think I. I mean, yeah, the Nexus five X is. It's not cheap enough to be a cheap phone. No, it's mid tier. It's but it's better than mid tier because it's priced better than mid tier. Right. Well, okay. Let's see. The the Nexus five two years ago launched at three fifty. Three fifty. Okay, and then the then the other Second one was four hundred. Yeah. Yep. Um. So this isn't, yeah, this isn't too much more than that. Um, and I'd say, I'd say that it is a reasonable price. At least if, if you had presented this to me two years ago, I would have been all over it. Right. Um, yeah. In the right. meantime, in There's the last two years, yeah, the, the mid range, um, market has kind of exploded. Like what is the Moto X again? That's... Uh, the Moto X Pure is three ninety nine. Yeah. So that's right so here. So $20 in the same... more. And those specs are closer, I think, to the... 6p mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you know it, it's a weird weird kind of situation here so so yeah the question is like what are you paying for that's uh comes extra in the 5x than uh, you the know Moto you're, X? you're paying for that 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 fingerprint scanner yep you're paying for new updates and you're also paying for USB C sort of yeah that's you, a you mixed... might you might be paying for that literally <laughs> <laughs> right and but yeah so you're you're getting something that's kind of a mixed blessing there right i mean i'm sure it's a great phone but I don't know if this is the phone that I would get. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually not sure if I'm going. I'm probably not going to get 
any of these because I am okay with my Nexus 5 currently. That's what you think. It's, yeah, that's, I mean, okay, so things that will push me to get a new phone. One memory leak coming one, soon. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't push me to get a new phone at the time. Oh, it's going to be better I just this kind time. Of, uh, I just kind of dealt with it. And it was amazing that I dealt with it because I know. at the time, I didn't have a desktop with me. That was you know, it was So I, I was using my Chromebook and my Nexus 5 almost exclusively. Except when I happened to be at my apartment, mm-hmm. in which case I could use my brother's crappy laptop. Because I remember how great that laptop was. Ugh. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, enough enough about my life. Um, what were we talking about? Right. Uh, so so let, let's look at the next one. Yeah. So base model for the Nexus 6P is four ninety nine. Yep. So five hundred dollars for the thirty two gig um, model. No, it has a it has a Snapdragon eight a ten. Mm-hmm. It has three gigs of memory. Mm-hmm. It's bigger. Mm-hmm. It it's made out of a more premium material, allegedly. Right. There are other phones that are more expensive that may be more premium. You know, like a S six or an iPhone S six S. Man, that's hard to say. Um, an LG G four is smaller, but also just as premium, I guess. Right. Um. So there are other phones, but this one is cheaper. It's only five hundred dollars. Um. I don't know what you have to say about this. It's, I'd say, I mean, it's a definitely a much more aggressively priced phone than the Nexus Six was. Yeah, only six fifty from some people. Oh my gosh, um, and it's nice. I love that it starts at thirty two gigs. Yes. Instead of starting at sixteen, because nobody should ever ever have to deal with a sixteen gigabyte device. Now, admittedly, my phone is a thirteen megapixel camera. I have gone. You know, I've taken enough pictures to have needed to wipe the pictures three times. Mm -hmm. And that's really sucky. Uh, On the uh, Nexus 5, it took me an entire year to get to the point where I saturated 32 gigs because (laughs) the pictures were, what, 8 megapixels or something? I think that's what it was, yeah. So, you know, maybe it should have started just at 64. I don't know. Uh, For the Nexus 6, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, I'd say, I mean... Yeah, this. Oh, and coupled with this, um, you also have to ke- take into account the fact that both phones uh, ha- are offering a $50 Google Play Store credit. I'm not going to take that them. into account. You're not? No, no. Okay. There are no apps to buy. Imagine how long that would last you then. Forever, but it doesn't matter because there are no apps to buy. Well, there's also... Oh, I wonder, could you have the uh, the Google Music subscription come out of your Google Play Store credit? I don't know. I don't think I've ever had that. You, you get but... some. You get some free months of that when you get this. Oh sure. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. But I mean, like that. That is something. Well. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that's something. It's for normal people. Nobody will even know what that means. Imagine how many books I can buy with that much money. Yeah, but imagine how many people I'll... won't read books on their like phone. Four. <laughs> Whoa! What kind of books are you reading? <laughs> well, I mean, like most new novels that come out are like eleven dollars or so. Man, I only buy paperbacks. Well, those are going to be a little bit more. Yes, but I can give them away after for somebody else. They'll be free. Sure. I'll buy the books. You read them. See? It's easy. Right. Mm-hmm. I'll buy the books. I'll, I'll strip the DRM off of it, and I'll uh, yeah, let you read them. That's, that's too much work. There's right. no DRM on a paper. Sure. Yeah. Except for the fact that you have to physically have it. That's like reality? Right. I don't, I don't know. I've moved S- beyond reality, Ryan. <laughs> Sounds like you. <laughs> So five forty nine, only fifty dollars more for the sixty four gigabyte model, and then a whopping six forty nine for the one twenty eight. Okay, yeah. So a hundred dollar jump. Yeah. From the second tier to the third tier. Well, yeah, but it's a, it's also a sixty four gigabyte jump. Yeah, but 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 no, I don't care. It's not acceptable. All Should right. just spend another fifty dollars. I don't think anybody really needs a one hundred twenty eight gigabyte phone at, the, at this time in history, anyway. No, probably no, not. No. Maybe I might. Really, so I mean, yeah, thirty-two and sixty-four are are the two choices that reasonable people will be making in two thousand fifteen. I don't know. Yeah, you know, actually, when I see that price now, it doesn't bother me at all. The six forty-nine. Yeah, that's what I paid for this. So. Yep, right for the next okay. the original Nexus. 6. Never mind. There Take back all of what I just said. Um. So, uh, yeah. I guess I mean reasons for buying it, reasons for not buying it. While everybody will have their own, um, you really have to kind of weigh what the new new hardware features mean to you. Mm-hmm. You know, is having a fingerprint sensor something that you really, really want to need? Um, I mean, I the thing the thing that everybody is kind of going crazy over with fingerprint sensors is you can tap to pay just by having your finger on the thing i need my and, wallet anyway and it's like well i can tap to pay as long as my phone is unlocked normally 
I need my wallet anyway. anyway. I'm never gonna do that. Do you, you're, okay. I need my bus card. I need my ID. I need I need my wallet anyway. I was really disappointed when I was in Sweden that the bus system couldn't just use NFC off of my phone. I was like, I thought it was in Europe. I thought it was the future. I tried to clone the card to a tag so I could make multiples. Oh yeah. Didn't let me. No. Mm-hmm. That, well, that means that their security is potentially working. It did work. Yeah. Good. Good work, Metro Transit. Following well, my plans. Now, you may have to take into account for the price the fact that they have um, Nexus Protect, which is uh, their kind of version of Apple Care. It is. Yep. And so this is a little bit um, different from previous years. You always got sort of like um, a warranty. Right. You know, a year or two or something, I mm-hmm. guess. And it, at some point, they would add like a one-time replacement sort of policy. Yep. And that's pretty they, cool. They wouldn't tell anybody, though. No, of course not. And so now they're doing this Nexus Protect thing, which is two years of technical technical replacement, I guess. So mm-hmm. if there's actually a problem with the phone that's not your fault, they'll replace it. Mm-hmm. And now uh, two years of accidental protection. Right. So how much does that cost? Um, you, uh, let's see, it looks like it says uh, $69 over there. For, yes, for the 5X. For the 5X. And yeah. $90 for the 6P. 6P. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So would you do it? Would I do it? Um, given, okay, so my track record is kind of interesting. I had two Nexus 7s. Crack. I broke one, grabbed yours, broke that as well within like, I feel like it was months, mm-hmm. you know, after I got it. Um, it was a long time after. Then I got the Nexus 5. And, and that's I, still around. And it's still around. It's been two it's years. Smaller. I ha- Yeah, exactly. It's a lot easier not to, to, to keep control of the device in my hands. Um, and since, since, you know, if I got like the, the 5X, five yeah five x i would probably be able to continue and have a pretty good track record on that and not break it i feel like i don't think i would do it either yeah i don't break phones um especially if so if they're including nexus protect here are they taking away the potential for like a one-time replacement for Hmm. people who bought it through the play store of course the play store is the only place that you can buy it right in the u.s yes i believe so yeah yeah, I think they'd probably be taking it away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. I'd yeah. better call them real soon then. Yeah, you might want to. You know, on the other hand, I don't think that's a big deal. I think people who are going into the program, they're either normal people and they'll take the warranty or they're enthusiasts and understand, eh, whatever, I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, if, if I don't know, if I bought one of those um, Protect plans, would I feel more... Would you feel more just, slippery? Would, would, well, would I just be like, oh, I'm going to throw my phone around now? So you're going to channel Matt. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a dangerous proposition for him. Um, of course, both of the devices are available on Google Fi, uh, which brings the number of devices available to three. To three. <laughs> uh, but that's good. I mean, like, it would have been crazy for them not to include those on. That would have been the death of Fi. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, uh, here's an interesting thing. So, you know, Fi uses T-Mobile and it uses Sprint. Yep. So, do you know what Band 12 is? Nope. So, Band 12 is T-Mobile's sort of rural band of signal. and It's, it's the suck. It, it, But it's the anti-suck because it replaces 2G. Oh, really? And it's going to basically, basically be in places where there just wasn't a signal or much signal before. But the thing is, it you mu- your phone must support Band 12 and Volt E, the the enhanced voice over LTE protocol. So it's basically it's everything goes over data, nothing goes over the voice network oh, anymore because okay. there isn't one. That's good because that's the future. Yeah, but apparently these two new phones don't support Band 12. Oh, so it's weird that they're getting into Fi, but they don't have Band 12 yet. But they might get Band 12 because the radio support it, but apparently they just haven't turned it on. How many phones have radios that have Band 12? Uh, the Nexus 6 does, but it didn't at launch. It got added. The okay. Pure didn't, but then it got added, I guess. Um, and a few other, you know, flagships have it. So I assume that the Nexus 5 doesn't. No, I don't think so. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I'm still salty about the fact that T-Mobile promised that they were bringing LTE to all areas that had 2G at the time by April of 2015, and it never made it to Morris. Hmm. Um, you know, I was in, um, South Dakota recently Mm -hmm. and the place is a dead zone. There's just, there's just no coverage there. Uh, but I was in Sioux Falls and that place had previously only 2G T-Mobile and then it was upgraded to 4G and wow, wasn't that nice. (laughs) It was very, very nice. Um, 
you know, we'll, we'll see about this band 12 deployment. It should be a just, you know, certification thing. Mm -hmm. Like, can the phone do it? Is it, you know, good, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's some kind of legal requirement that you must be able to call 911. Right. And so if your phone isn't certified to prove that it can do band 12 support in an area where there is no phone service, you must use band 12 then. Okay. And so if your phone doesn't support it, you can't get their certification for it. I don't know. It's some kind of weird thing. Like right. That. So hopefully that happens. Hmm. So after that, they talked about photos for a while. No. Which is, I mean, I, I've mm. been using uh, the new photo. Well, I was using the old Google Photos system. You. And then I started using the new photo system. Yes. Which is good. Um, and it's amazing how many things they're bringing to the f new photo system that they're like, well, look at this well, new feature. And I'm just going, I already had you know, that You know, it's before. funny. I, I, as a developer, I know exactly how that is. You know, the current CMS is totally fine. But I'm going to make a new one and I keep telling people that it's going to be great and all. It's going to be just awful. You just have to yeah, do it. Wait until all, all again. the previous features get there again. Yeah, I, I get it from a developer standpoint, but it's awful for you mm -hmm. know a user point. So you. in this case, uh, what I'm complaining about is the fact that they uh, now have Chromecast support for Google Isn't that Photos. Nice? And it's better than it was before. Oh, that's good. So uh, previously, if you switched pictures on your phone, it would force you to switch them on the Chromecast. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't want to show somebody a picture, you had no choice. They would see it. What happened if I went back to the list and started scrolling through it the would list? Just, I guess it would just stop, apparently. Oh. Uh, so now it actually does what you think it will do. It, will, it won't stop. It'll just keep you on the picture that you were on, mm -hmm. and it won't take forever, and it'll be good. Cool. Yeah. And um, it's faster and better. And did the old version support like local uh, photos? Now, as far as mirroring? I know, it did not. Okay, because that's would, new. It would extremely often say, this picture isn't on your cloud. Yeah. Or something. But we don't have to worry about that anymore. Nope. Um, they also have, uh, continuing with, with the theme of having, of making Google photos into this, the, like the perfect system for sharing, uh, photos with other people. Um, they now have shared albums, mm -hmm. which, uh, was sort of kind of a feature sort in of. Google plus photos, but it was tied to Google events, which nobody ever used. I used it one time. I think it was for a Christmas party. Or yeah. Yeah. I did it for my going to Sweden party. Um, I knew that I was going to have a few people with Android phones there. So mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I'm going to invite you to a Google Plus event and we're going to see if we can make all the photos go into a shared album. How'd, how'd that work out? It did. Um, the, the photos are there. I actually am not sure if like the photos that other people took that are in that shared album became part of my Google Photos. Hmm, that is a good point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Archive. Um, hmm. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, I remember when I did it, um, you know, my mom and dad were there and... My mom just had no clue what I was talking about. Just re refused to participate. See, this is why I needed to come here to talk to you about all of this, because uh -huh. the alternative was, I'm going to talk to my mom about this while we're in the car, and she's not going to understand any of it. Oh, well, see, I already did that to both of my parents. It's just basically <laughs> priming them for the inevitable time when I ask them for money to go and buy one of the bloody things. <laughs> right, because no job. Yeah. Um... Employ me now. So, so yeah. So, um, shared albums are now a thing. Um, there's like there's two different versions of link sharing, I guess, for albums. It's pretty cool. There's there's the version that just lets people see the al the pictures and download them, mm -hmm. and then there's the link that will let other people make them like co-authors essentially right. on the album. Now, so I did not. I'm, they probably told you in the show, but maybe I just missed it or something. Now, when they send you that link, can you do it from the web interface, or does it force you to go into the app? Oh, God, I hope that you can do it from the web interface. Because I think it'd be really cool if you were able to share pictures through an iPhone, for example, if you didn't have Google Plus installed. Mm. You know, assuming you got that link. Or on Windows, maybe? On Windows phone? Do people have Windows no, no, phones? No, no, no. On Windows desktop. Oh, you know, desktop. The only way to do anything with Google <laughs> on a desktop is through the browser. So if they don't support the browser, we're boned. Hey, I, I hope you get ready for that feeling, because that's what it's going to be like. That's the future. I mean, web. It, I hope that Google doesn't uh, abandon, completely abandon the platform that made them what they are. Yeah, they did. It's over. Oh, well. You um, mean Android? <laughs> um, but yeah, so shared albums seem like they're going to be perfect, especially like I've I've been sort of trying to do shared album sorts of things in Google Photos as it currently is. Well, you know, if this had been around when, we were, when I went to... Uh, South Dakota from Mount Rushmore and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would have been super cool because we all took pictures with our phones and it could have all been grouped together in one nice album. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a way to retroactively to, do it to default like 
So I'm taking a bunch of pictures oh, here. Yeah. I want all of these to go into this vacation folder that we made, album that we made before we started the vacation. That would be amazing. There's no way that's a thing. Um, yeah, because then people would just leave it on and forget, and, and then you'd have pictures from the next week uh, in your vacations album. Well, I was thinking, you know, it could you could set an expiry or something. Oh, sure, sure. But but in, in addition to that, I think people would also just be confused by it. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. um, nobody knows what folders are. So, okay, so so do we want to move on to music then? I would love to. All right, music. So basically the only thing that's new is uh, in addition to the the uh google play all access music uh, the complicated named service yeah um which is you know ten dollars per month for just for your account um i'm still on that eight dollars a month one from from the first month yeah um they have introduced a family plan for fifteen dollars a month uh where you can share that with six people that's really cool and it's yeah it seems i mean that's i mean obviously it's it's very very cost effective um and I'm really glad that they did it. Who who else? Somebody else introduced that recently. Was it Spotify or was it Apple? Well, so Apple did a family plan. I don't know the price, but I'm thinking it's probably fifteen dollars. Probably. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many people. It might be four or five or six. I don't know for okay. sure. But it's the same exact idea. Yeah. You can one person can pay for it, and then you know it's a family plan. You just go and give access to the email address of the account, and mm-hmm. there you go. It's done. Yep. Yeah, I guess that was sort of through their deal through Beats, what Who? used to be Beats, the Apple. Oh, the Apple one. Okay, yeah. Um, so for Google to do it, it makes perfect sense because Andrew C said it was okay. Yeah, and and this is kind of, I mean, I'm really glad that music streaming is kind of going this direction because um, Netflix kind of pure, pioneered mm-hmm. this whole thing with like, okay, we're going to admit that multiple people are using one account. We'll just make it easier for them um, so that they don't all have to see like each other's Stuff. suggestions yes. and. And, Even though they're wrong anyway, and then they and then they um, took advantage of it by offering like different tiers of the streaming yes, plan. So like right. you can have one that allows you to stream to two different devices at once, or you can pay a little bit more a month and mm-hmm. have one that's like four, and then you also get Quad HD. Where you know available. Netflix still has one more thing to do in that that scheme though. They don't have split accounts yet, but under one unified pair. Oh sure, and that's the one thing Netflix should do, but it hasn't done. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's just a rights thing. Maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I'm definitely thinking about doing the $15 a month you plan. You know, I, I think, so my parents, um, my mom always wants to listen to music at work, and my dad listens to music when he's at work, and so maybe doing this would convince them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 15 bucks isn't that bad for all you can eat music. Right, and this is, oh, this is going to be perfect, actually, because, um, you know, my sister's uh they're they're coming into their teens and they're growing up in a world where like you when you listen to music you have to listen to ads right, right. because they don't have money they don't have credit cards my sisters can't even use google google music um to store their stuff mm-hmm. and just play their own stuff right. because you have to have a payment method associated with your account so i think if i if i share this yeah. family plan with them then they'll be able to use the service definitely um and it's it, i'm going to introduce them to a world without ads that's going to be so much better. Yay, premium. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, all right. Now, if you're at home and you want to go play some music, what's the easiest way to do it? Well, for me, I would have to go and find my Bluetooth speaker brick thing right. and then pair it and then hope Bluetooth works. Because it's not paired with your phone anymore? Well, because it, it, once it goes to sleep, it unpairs the, the brick thing. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Because mm-hmm. mm. why would Bluetooth 4.1 do what it says? Um not better and uh then i would try to find a way to stream my music to it and then i would hear it okay um yeah mine's a little bit more simple i would either just grab my grenade uh s- speaker it okay it looks it, it literally is that looks the one like that splits no no oh, no okay. that no that was different um, i like that one um and and play my music off of my phone onto that or i would grab the television computer Mm. and uh go play it through that yeah play it through those speakers that are plugged into now that. admittedly i don't listen to music so that's not a problem right yeah um i mean if you used you don't use google play music at all um i hate that app yeah it's so awful. if you did you could use it through the chromecast and i can use mine yeah yeah through the chromecast that's in my housemate's room that would yeah whatever yeah um but so okay terrible segue attempt aside yeah well there are new chromecasts how many um there well are we counting colors no no okay because then there would be eight thousand new ipads there's two new chromecasts 
right? Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> okay, so there's the, first. Let's talk about the video one, yeah. um, which is a continuation of the old Chromecast. So they are calling this the Chromecast 2015. I think the more appropriate name would have been, would have just been Chromecast TV. But you know, mm-hmm. what do I know? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> how about like the Chromecast? Now it's not a stick. <laughs> crap i'm gonna have to rename it <laughs> right no way okay so it's not a stick it's anymore it's a circle the chrome disc okay i love with it there we go um so so yeah it's they've got a new form factor instead of being like this hard plastic stick that you plug into the back the usb actually comes off of it as a cable mm-hmm. um and you and you plug it in and then the hdmi cable itself is integrated into it i think right right yes and it's kind of wobbly or wiggly and it's long and it's not actually that long it looks like it's about two inches long it's long enough and, and then the the disc itself that is hard plastic mm-hmm. and contains all of the components um that kind of hangs down from wherever you plug it <laughs> <laughs> and they're and they're saying that it's making that it makes it super nice for like travel because you can take the USB um cord and fold it onto the back of the thing and they magnetically just kind of clips into okay. place. So let me ask you. If you had a Chromecast, how often would you move it from place Never. to place? Yeah, cuz you'd just buy another one. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because so, they kept the wonderful $35 price point. So I did take it to um a thing once. I had a class, we needed to do presentations, and I took the Chromecast just in case mm-hmm. they wanted an easy way to Chromecast their presentation cuz we were all using Google Docs, you know. Sure. Well, it turns out they had no support for that cuz their HDMI was really a conversion from HDMI to VGA cuz you know, projectors at the University of Minnesota right. suck. Yep. I mean, imagine what SPVS has. Those are worse uh stone tablets yeah pretty much yeah um maybe just some, tablets. sometimes when i'm carrying those bins around full of ipads <laughs> it feels like i'm carrying stone tablets yeah well you know ipad air one um so yeah so what what comes with this new one um they talk about how they have new antennas and obviously so it's five gigahertz yep it's probably mimo we don't i don't think they said that but i'm sure it is mm-hmm. um which will improve reception and hopefully improve buffering. And, and they had and a lot like, of pretty graphs about like how its its Wi-Fi performance compares in different con- in different yeah. conditions to other competitors. We'll see if that's true. In my experience, do you do you ever do the you know two point four to five gigahertz switching stuff? Do you ever notice oh, or care? Um, yeah. So we in, in my house now we have a router with uh, that runs two different mm-hmm. networks at yep. the same time. Um, and I, I mean, I just have all of my devices have five gigahertz okay. Wi-Fi. And so you're so okay I, with that? So that I just for keep you? on, yeah. So my Nexus devices, since probably the Nexus 4, have been able to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, I've used Tasker for many years. And so what I do right. is I can turn certain features on and off based on which network I am on. And I hate the five gigahertz network because if I leave the house, it's basically gone. Oh, okay. So I can't go out in the yard at it all. It doesn't reach as far as the 2 gigahertz. And I guess that's cool for some people, but for me, it's annoying. Mm-hmm. Now, I never notice with the Chromecast. I only watch YouTube with the Chromecast, honestly. YouTube on the Chromecast actually buffers in real time, whereas on every other computer for quite a long time, it was awful. And oh, yeah. my Wi-Fi just was never an issue. I don't live with a lot of people in you know an apartment or anything. Right, but you have plenty of devices. Yeah, you I probably know. Probably have more devices on your Wi-Fi networks here than the six of us have in my house. Yeah, I'm sure I do alone. Um, but what I mean is, there's no network congestion because of other networks, so I don't need okay. five gigahertz. It's uh, not okay. a thing for me. But for a lot of people, it was. Mm-hmm. You know, they offered that uh, Chrome Stick LAN, Chromecast LAN tool. It was on the Play Store for like a week, and it was sold out. Hmm. You can look it up if you want to. It's pretty okay. funny. Okay. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, other let's see other changes that they made to the Chromecast. Um, they they have this like kind of prefetching fast load um feature. Okay, what do you think about that? I like it. I oh, mean, okay. I I'm all for um you know like Chrome does the same thing when I when I open up a new tab and I start typing in um a URL, it'll kind of like try and figure out what site I'm going to be going to and start loading it before I even hit enter. Mm-hmm. That's that's a feature that I love. Um, oh. This is the this is the content discovery. Yes, this is the new content discovery app. It's basically, uh, if you have apps installed on your phone, I, I'm assuming it's using some kind of intent to figure it out. If you're not a developer, just ignore what I said. Uh, it, it basically scans your phone for apps that have Chromecast stuff, mm-hmm. and then it adds it to just one big list, and that's pretty cool. I didn't think I would like it during the presentation, but it actually is okay. Yeah, and and so the 
the thing that this is uh, kind of solving is, um, let's let's say on desktop, because this obviously doesn't exist on desktop. Um, let's say I want to go and watch a TV show. I have to actively remember which, mm-hmm. like whether I have it on Netflix or whether I have it on Hulu um, or some other app. Prime. Yeah, yeah. Showtime. Um, and this kind of gets rid of that, at least for, for Makes Chromecast a little easier. things. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's cool. Uh, you know, my fear with it is that they'll start shoving junk in it I don't want. Well, they, they already kind of do that on the homepage, right? Is no. showing you, um, stuff. No, but like, no, what else are they going to do? No, with let's, the let's see. What was, what were these two things here? Uh, honest trailers, Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Hillary supporters like Trump's tax plan. Neither of those two <laughs> things I, I ever wanted to know about. <laughs> And it's like it doesn't know what your subscriptions are on YouTube or anything. You're right. That's probably why. Hmm. Hmm. What Google ecosystem? That's why they want to index everything. Um. So yeah, that's. I mean, it it's hopefully solves a problem that is pretty common. Um. So do you think Chromecast for you is evolving fast enough? I don't have a Chromecast, so yes. Okay. For me, I don't think so. I think it could do so much more. And we should be going way faster. Here. Even with the new audio one? Yeah, even with the new audio one. Hey, let's talk the, about the new audio let's one. Let's talk about the new one. So you said this in a, in a tweet right afterwards while we were talking about it. And I, I can't believe that I didn't think of it when they were announcing it. Um, Nexus Q. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about that. Like, at, So what was <laughs> how much did that cost? Two ninety nine, three ninety nine. I don't know. It was a lot. Oh, yeah. I don't um, remember. This is $35. Mm-hmm. Remind you of anything? Like the other one? Yeah. Yeah. So... I guess the idea is you plug it into speakers with either a 3.5 millimeter mm-hmm. standard audio jack yep. or optical SPDIF, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, having that optical is super important for high-end audio systems. Yeah. So praise, I don't own. praise the Duarte. Um, you know what, what that is, right? But, what, okay, Matthias? D- yeah. Okay. What does he have to do with audio? Uh, he looks good no matter how you hear him. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he had something to do with the fact that the that the Chromecast audio looks like a record. I am sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would be just like him actually. And did you notice when they were showing like the the four different versions of the yes. new Chromecast that the uh, audio one had its little yep, uh, three the, and a half yep, middle wrapped millimeter. around it? Yeah. Well, not wrapped around it, but kind of draped over it yep. like they were headphones. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> so somebody did a good job there. Yep. So what's the deal with it? What does it do? Um. So basically, it's. I mean. If you understand what the Chromecast for the television is, you'll understand what the Chromecast for audio is. Mm-hmm. It's you just plug it into your dumb sound system, and when it when you're in the same room or Wi-Fi network, you know, then then you'll be able to go. I want to play this thing from this app through those speakers, and boom, it happens. I think that's pretty cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a problem I have for you to figure out. You you're gonna have to put your developer hat on and go make this right now. Okay. Okay, it's on Ian. Okay, here we go. So let's say I have a podcast network. Right. And it doesn't necessarily have a Chromecast button. Uh, you mean a, a podcast managing app? Or... No, I have a podcast network. Okay. I go to, I go to the web page in Chrome, and I want to play it on my new Chromecast audio device. Can, I can't. Can you do Chromecast support on a website? You can. Oh, you can. You can. I did But you that. have to add it, and you have to get a developer account, and you have to get an API key, and it sucks. Oh. So I didn't do it. Well, that's fine, because BeyondPod has Chromecast support. Yeah, but I don't like apps. Well, I'm just... Um, I just I, I, I'm not that's one the of, whole idea I'm one here. Of the, is I'm one of app? those users who don't install apps on their phone. <laughs> and for, for some reason, I was conned into buying a $600 Nexus device and a $35 <laughs> dongle. And so, why can't I play any audio? You know, like screen mirroring? Why can't I play audio oh, mirroring? Oh, sure, sure. Is that a thing? Why not, if it isn't? Uh, that, uh, that should be a thing, actually, now that you mention it. Um, but then... Then it's kind of giving in to some of the... Give in. The, Do it now. <laughs> so, so so some of the things that they said in the presentation was they were comparing um, the, the Chromecast audio experience to the uh, like Bluetooth audio experience, yeah. right? And so one of the things that happens when you're on a Bluetooth speaker is if you get a notification on your phone... Plunk. Yeah, it, it dims the, uh, yep. the music and then plunks on the Bluetooth speaker. When you get... A, a if somebody calls you god forbid um you have you know especially if you have like a speaker that for some reason it comes with us with a microphone built oh, in because like they thought it was them. going to be useful yeah they were um, wrong yeah like the the speaker itself will ring possibly not in the same ringtone that you have set on your device yep uh, and then 
if you answer it, it'll be going through that Bluetooth speaker instead of going through your phone. Many times I have missed a call because it was ringing in the other room. <laughs> so, so yeah, so the, I mean, the Chromecast audio um, experience gets rid of those annoyances. Mm-hmm. And if they mirrored, if they offered mirroring audio, then those annoyances would be back in those cases. Okay, well, I would be willing to deal with that. To that end, maybe that's not necessarily true. So here I am, I'm playing an audiobook through Chrome. Okay. And Chrome has the thing in tabs now where if you play audio, it'll show you which tab is playing. Yep, and it on sticks Cr- it in the notification bar and keeps it there. Right, and so this is what Chrome does on Android. And mm-hmm. so, in theory, because it can recognize that, maybe it could mirror selectively. That would be cool. And so I think they probably will just do this thing I'm talking about eventually. Right. So maybe you don't Especially have to Especially if they listen to this. Maybe you don't have to put your developer hat on. Maybe you can just r- submit maybe a I can PR just request. Stay a, fa- a, a happy user. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's better. Maybe. Mm, no. I'm a high school teacher now. I don't need to develop things. Man, <laughs> could have been so good. Great. Um, what else do we have? Well, oh my gosh, this last thing. I didn't see this coming at all. I don't think nobody. Any, any, uh, whatever. I mean, I there, have nothing. To there tell was you. a rumor or two about it a day before, apparently, but like I had no idea that nobody this was wanted to believe the rumor. So, Pixel C. Not Pixel 3, okay. Pixel C. So, okay, let me let me set the stage for you here because it's really important. What does C stand for? It's Well, hold on, hold on. we got to start from the beginning. Um, so the way that I understood it when they were talking about it, they started talking about the Chromebook. They started talking about the Chromebook Pixel. And then they started talking about what if we made it, like, convertible. And so they had this all-metal tablet um, that's kind of, you know, intentionally built to look like the Pixel C. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it comes with a, well, it doesn't come necessarily with the keyboard, but, you know, it's got this keyboard that you it magnetically clasps to, and then you can, like, flip it over and uh, and, and magnetically clasp it to um, a stand that, you know, is on a hinge and everything. And all the while, I'm going, they made a tablet running Chrome OS? What is this but like, but they they kind of blew past like saying, oh, and it runs the latest, uh, you know, Marshmallow six point oh, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and it, so it took me a while to figure out this is actually just straight up an Android tablet, yeah. running stock Android built like a Chromebook. I, you know what? Mm. So, have you ever used an Android tablet with a keyboard and or mouse? Uh, I did try to use a Bluetooth keyboard with my um, what's it called, Shield. Okay. Uh, for a while How'd that of, go? of course the keyboard that i had had a you know was it was part of a case that was built for like the oh, samsung well, tab whatever right of course um so i didn't get that whole having a, a, a kickstand kind right. of yeah but just just the operating system of android with a keyboard was that okay for you it's it's okay but i mean i don't feel like i would ever be using the tablet really in a in a situation where i would need a keyboard yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm a programmer. You might have heard about that. Yep. And I program frequently, right. like almost hourly. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, Android's useless for programming, so I wouldn't right. recommend it. But if it wasn't, I would never use a Bluetooth keyboard for a tablet because they're really tiny and they don't have any keys on them, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um. But mouse support on Android is literally incredible. Oh yeah. Like there's mice all over it. Even yeah. Even so, the the, uh, the Nvidia controller that comes mm-hmm. for the for the tablet um it has this little trackpad on that's it that's great it's, yeah <laughs> so <laughs> this thing uh you know it's it's a cool idea that you know you can have a tablet that is running android that has a keyboard but it doesn't make any sense why bother right i, I feel like google needed like that so somehow they they got it in their heads that they needed to compete with the surface and the ipad pro yeah. and this is what they came up with what's even worse is that it's not even under the Nexus line. It's in the Pixel line. Right. But it's running Android. Right. Because I thought Pixel was Chrome OS. I know. it. It's so confusing. It's kind of like the Chromecast. It runs Android technically, but it's called Chromecast. Mm, mm-hmm. It doesn't... Something doesn't make sense. Right. I, and I mean, so in order to kind of fairly judge this device, we have to get past the naming scheme, the marketing, you know, well, the, I don't mind the categorization. That. Um, so I, I need to stop thinking about that and just consider it okay so this is an android tablet you know what can i possibly use it for um okay well here let me help you the device costs 499 which is the same price as the base model ipad air 2 which is Mm -hmm. a lovely product i encourage no one to buy it but it is a lovely product um how how much storage does the chromebook i mean pixel c come with Mm, if i could tell you just to compare those um, two mm -hmm. what if i told you google doesn't want you to know oh well yeah 
Uh, that's another problem. Nobody knows anything about the thing. Yeah. Um, let's just pretend it comes with 16. I don't know. Maybe it comes with 13. That would be terrible. Let's just, let's just say it does. Okay. And because I assume the base model iPad Air 2 does also. Mm-hmm. So which would you rather have, an Android tablet or an iPad Air 2? Well, I personally am kind of invested in the Android ecosystem. Um, that being said... If you I'm, didn't have a tablet already, oh, well, who I, would you buy? Probably the iPad. Me yeah. too. And I can't recommend anybody to buy this. Yeah. Because, guess what? The keyboard doesn't even come with it. <laughs> That's another $150. Mm-hmm. The product doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and so the, the other thing about it is like Android Android on tablets, the the interface isn't really like built for tablets. Of course, the okay, iOS isn't built for tablets either. It, um, it, but it is though. There are iOS tablet specific features. Um, they're not many, but there are yeah. some. I'm mostly thinking about okay. So I go especially to the, new iOS. I go um, to the home screen and it's like, bleh. well, right. So the home screen hasn't evolved, but on uh, the new iPad Pro and also the iPad Air two and iPad Mini three and four, you can do side by side apps now. Right. Yes. Where's that on Android? Exactly. That's the other thing is is if they're trying to put this as like a productivity tablet, you know, competing with the Surface and the iPad Pro, they need to have side by side multitasking, which and is a thing I assumed that they were going to add it to Android for years because they've, you know, Well, go- Samsung did it. Exactly. It's ready to go. Samsung, Somebody figured it out. Samsung and has they done don't have, so many things. And they don't even have like the anointed magic. Um, you know, they have they have to make their own stuff. They don't. They don't have mm-hmm. the Google. Mm-hmm. So it's very strange um, that that Google didn't do this or just wait until this product. Yeah, this would have been the perfect product to pair with that. The yeah now, side by side. Maybe they just maybe they are going to do it. Maybe it's going to be a secret update in February. Like hello, hi, here you go. Well, who's going to buy the thing? So in the here's meantime? the deal. Here's why I'm saying that. Uh, early in preview one, I believe. They are actually were there was a way to enable side by side ish or super fast switching preview of Android M. Oh, okay, sure. In preview one, there was a way to enable this side by side stuff. Huh. I guess I I heard about it. So maybe it does exist, and they just didn't get ready in time because it is probably a pretty big endeavor yeah. to recode the entire awful activity system in Android. But don't worry, I won't be bitter for too long. Sure. Um. So maybe they will do it, but again, you're right. Who will buy it in the meantime? Mm-hmm. No one. But yeah, I mean, Google has a few products like that that aren't meant for like tons of people to be uh, but, buying but. it in the meantime, and the Pixel is one of them. So, but the Pixel yeah. makes sense. It's a laptop that's good, but again, it's a, running not, Chrome it, OS. Yeah, yeah you, you get where I'm going with this. Hmm. You know, Google has an issue. Oh, the other thing about it is, uh, so it's running the Nvidia X1 processor. That's a good processor. Is it, though? Because every single processor that NVIDIA's come out with, everybody's like, it's a great processor. And then I get the tablet that's running it, and I'm like, God <laughs> Take three. damn, I can't multitask <laughs> at all. So here, let's go over the lineage of that. The Tegra 3 wasn't the problem. It was actually the NAND dying in the original Nexus 7. Okay, cool. Okay. The Tegra 3 wasn't even that good anyway, but it was okay. Okay, so then, what was what, what's yours? The K1? The Shield has the K1. Okay, so the K1 had at launch some relatively large issues switching for some unknowable reason and i don't know you tell me have they fixed that i don't know have they no (laughs) of course not (laughs) why would they they fixed my battery apparently Uh, which wasn't a problem for me i assume the nexus 9 has the same problem because it uses the same k1 yeah right yeah and that's that the it could be just a driver issue it could be actual hardware problems I don't know if the uh, X1 is any better in this respect. I know the shield on the table version. Do you know what I mean? The, the console shield, I guess. Oh, sure, sure. Um, shield on the table, right? Right, because that one's that one's that the one, X1, yeah. That one's plugged in, and so its clock speed is gigantic. It uses mm-hmm. tons of power, 20 watts. Mm-hmm. It's Everybody loves the thing, because it doesn't matter. You don't have to switch. Right. You, you just play games or something. Oh, sure. Or you just look at it, make heat. Um this you buy some infrared goggles to go with it and, of course yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh-huh uh this is going to be on battery power only which means it can't be clocked too high mm-hmm. or too high for too long which means it's going to be slower now right. that the real question is will it be comparable in performance to a uh, snapdragon a10 and if the answer is no then what were they thinking yeah i don't know 
I guess the real question all comes back to what was Google doing with this? What was the point? Do you think that they originally had intended to put Chrome OS on it, but then somehow thought, no, let's do Android? Do you think that they just had too many de- uh, designers sitting around and they were like, you make a nice looking tablet this time? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, let's not be, let's, let's not like beat around the bush though. Physically, Wow, it looks nice. It looks it, it wow. looks very nice. It's sleek. It has you know it's all metally. Mm-hmm. Um, there are speakers all over the place. I mean, I really can't tell you too much about it because there are no pictures apparently. Um, the, even the keyboard is pretty cool. It's yeah. magnetically attached. Mm-hmm. It's a super strong magnet. You can hold the thing from the keyboard. Right. Yeah. He was just kind of swinging it around like <laughs> like it was. Uh, uh, you know that's really a cool. Swing. I appreciate the effort, but the execution. What are these? Oh, it does. It. I wasn't sure if it had a camera on the back or not, but it does. Yeah, it does have one there. And I don't know why I keep missing. What are you looking for? Oh, I want to just click, <laughs> click in pictures. But it didn't... Well, this website is broken. So there's three dots on the top. What could that be for? That's four. Whatever. There's four dots. There's uh, three now. Uh, they were talking about those are the microphones because oh, uh, okay. it, they want you to be able to do OK Google from across the room. Did I activate anything? No. No. Darn. That's funny. There's... Three devices in here that can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that. You know, that problem is going to be uh, compounded once, you know, the Nexus devices that are listening while the screen is off come out. Yes. Wait, don't ours do that? No, my my Nexus 5 only does it oh, right. when, I thought you had uh, a Nexus when 6, the sorry. screen is on. I'm pre- so if I do, my okay, Nexus 6 Google. can do it. Wait. <laughs> oh, no, wait, what? Well, I gotta get it so that it's like actually locked, locked, and not um, sleeping locked. You know, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's still unlocked. In terms anyway. of okay, well, there haven't been any events for the last three years, so I guess that was a bad question. I normally ask the uh, uh, Google I/O crowd, whoever does that with me, or the uh, Apple event crowd, how did this compare to previous years? Um, yeah, I guess the only events that we can compare it to are Google I/O events. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely nicer than a blog post. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was exciting to be able to show this to my class. Um, you know, two of whom were were paying attention. Um, one kid actually did come up to me. He was on like the other side of the room and couldn't really see the screen. He walks up to me while I'm watching them talk about Chromecast, and he's like, "What's this?" <laughs> and so I had to explain uh, the concept of a Chromecast to him. Um, yeah, no, it was. I mean. I was amazed at how many different devices they were announcing at one event. So that's very so the, unlike. Was the answer Google. five? I think right. Uh, of num- number of devices, devices new. Yeah. Yeah, we got two yeah. two phones, two Chromecasts, and a, a, a tablet. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And a thing. <laughs> and a and a couple of like services, you know. Yeah. Software well. things. So I would say that's really good. Um, I thought the phone stuff wasn't emphasized a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was over pretty quick, actually. I thought that was kind of strange. Um, of course, it was only an hour and a half. You know, for me, what I would do, and of course, it's hard for Google to do this because of the previews now, but I always would hold some cool feature back, something that we didn't talk about before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could have been multitasking. Maybe they were trying to get that in there, but oh, they just couldn't. Oh, jeez, that would have been um, amazing. But on the other hand, how could they launch that point blank without having anybody actually written apps or tested it? Boom. The answer would be memory leaks all over the place. Yeah. So I get it. But still... Also, the leaks before this event happened were absurd. We knew everything two days before. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess that's cool for the people who read it like me, but also the people like me also were sad that there was nothing I didn't know about. Right. Right. So I guess that's that's good. So uh, what are you getting here? Getting anything? Um, I'll, I mean, once I get an actual television in my house and stuff, I'll be getting one of the new Chromecasts. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll probably get one too. I... I need to give it some time so that I can actually invest in some sound systems for the different rooms in my mm-hmm. in my house to get some Chromecast audios. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that'd be another cool feature. If you walk room to room, it would just figure it out. That would be amazing. Hmm. Um, you know, with their new uh, room mapping technology. Oh, sure. From the from the I don't remember what that augmented called. reality project. Whoever or those people. Are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm. I, I probably won't be buying a new phone for a little while. And, and like, in my heart, the Nexus line is now kind of directly competing with uh, the Moto X. Mm-hmm. Um, which, I and, you know, it all, it all depends on what, like, the reviews come back with. 
That's um, another thing, especially in yeah, terms those of the reviews. camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because it's it's impossible to know just from a presentation, from an announcement, what they're gonna and you know do. last night tons of people took pictures. Was that yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. You know, yesterday, tons of people took pictures, you know, during the press event and mm-hmm. whoever got copies or clone devices later. Right. But, uh, you know, those people, you know, they're, they're taking pictures in bright lights and well-lit rooms mm-hmm. and, you know. Well, yeah, Google's not going to stick them in a bar. So, not until after the event. I think there was a bar on the Nexus 6P. <laughs> Uh, yeah so i mean maybe the reviews will tell us that they're all awful and we shouldn't do it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe if you want a phone right now today and you don't mind that it being huge you'll just go and buy a nexus 6 from amazon for 350 new i probably won't no but but, i mean if you were looking for if you were looking for a new phone today that would be the best nexus to get Mm -hmm. even if the other phones were available to order in two days the nexus 6 regular would still be better Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't know did the price really go down that much? Through fifty. Through is that through like oh, f- what? How much is it on the Play Store still, or the through the Google Store? I don't know if it's even listed anymore because of the new phones, but I assume it's also three fifty. Oh, okay, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, because because they're done with it. And it, and that's that's the, another thing about phones these days is like it it really all comes down to preference, you know. Like you're assuming that I'm willing to buy a gigantic ass phone. I I'm, I'm not, not. I wasn't willing. I just had to. Okay. I'm compelled. Okay. You know, that's that's the main reason that I would be going with the 5X over the 6P is because I don't want to have to deal with a 5.7-inch display. Oh, man, that uh, sounds like a luxury to me. <laughs> oh, if it was just a little smaller, it'd be perfect. Um, but yeah, I mean, gosh, I it's it's hard to believe that this is still my, the first phone that I've ever owned. I, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible. It's crazy. You know, I love this phone. It's mm-hmm. so thin. The, it's so light. By the light. way, we're talking about the original Nexus 5 here. Um, for we... those of you who can't see us. Yeah. So all, none of you. <sighs> hmm. So Ryan, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amara, and of course on the Google Plus, which is where I post pictures of jackhammers. Isn't it so great to be able to say that kind of thing? I again? do say it occasionally on every podcast, which is recorded occasionally on Sundays every couple of weeks when Brian Mitchell is not on a trip to Oslo mm-hmm. and other associated areas with great tap water. Oh yes, that was a fun conversation to have. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> So I'm Ian Buck. You can find me on uh, probably on Google Plus is where I'm most active. Although we have been having a lot of conversations on Twitter, you and I. I got uh, Matt to use Twitter. You'll now find all of us engaged. <laughs> I I also have uh, started to become pretty active on my YouTube channel. That's actually, good. Um, making actual content. I've seen you do some streaming things mm-hmm. and stuff. That's cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of. Uh, I'm always oh when you start doing them, so yeah, I never get to watch them. Sorry, yeah. uh, but but. It archives them forever, wow. which is better than anybody else can say. Hmm. Um, and uh, sometime soon, I might have a personal website to actually <gasps> uh, collect and archive all of the things that I do, maybe. I'll study you doing it. Thanks. Anytime. All right. So uh, how else do we uh, What else do we do to end these things? Just bye-bye? Um, yeah. you have a you. good one. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. <laughs>